Okay, let's recap what you've told us so far, Ellen. For the past 13 years, you've been trapped in a nightmare dimension called the Dark Place. Yeah. It's like New York, but it's not New York. And can be reached from the bottom of Cauldron Lake, but it's not really under the lake. And after all this time, you've managed to get out. Yeah, yeah. But so has your evil doppelganger. Mr. Scratch? Or is it the Dark Presence? Both. It's interchangeable. He's Scratch when he looks like me, but he can change into this other form. And Scratch, the Dark Presence, wants to rewrite the world in his own image. Which would be in your image, as he looks just like you. And turn the world into a fucking nightmare. During Deerfest, which is scheduled to take place in a couple of days. You got out of the Dark Place by writing a novel, the pages we've been finding. But your double edited it into a horror story that's now changing reality, taking over people, yeah. making them crazy, bringing the Dark Place to Bright Falls. Yes, fiction coming in contact with the Dark Place can change reality. The story is coming true, soaking into everything, like, like, like darkness when, it, when night falls. But last time... It... This will be back in 2010. Yes, last time it didn't happen all at once. The story came true bit by bit as it unfolded. And that dark presence was still bound to the lake. I stopped it before it got the ending it wanted. Before it broke free. Based on that, there's still time. Which brings us to your magical light switch. The clicker. Magical doesn't quite cover it. Scratch wants it to bring about his ending. That, that can't happen. If I can get the clicker, I, I can send him back to the dark place, make all the shit go away. I... Look, I know it's batshit crazy. My memory is, is full of holes, and I, I'm not sure how much I can trust. It, it's like it's like it's like a half-forgotten dream. Mr. Wake, Alan, we've seen our share of that shit crazy in the past 24 hours. What I want to know is, why am I? Why are we written into the story? I think I saw you. Or a vision of you in the dark place. I think you helped me reach out and escape somehow. With that in the story, Scratch would have edited it to get to you. To hurt you. We are all in danger. much of it. <laughs> Almost five minutes in, might as well say something. Welcome back to Let's Play Alan Wake 2. I'm Burning Dog Face, and uh, I'm on quite a while longer than I expected. Yes, things are very complicated, and I'm not going to let it pass by that that was like, what, the third or fourth time we've seen Saga and uh, Casey drink their coffee in unison? That's really weird, the synchronized movements. Shout out to Justin Jones, who says another video that Kel and I got to watch together. Thanks, BDF. So long as you don't open a locker and Tommy was here is written inside it, along with a lot of blood and slime. And the first time I ever heard Old Scratch as a nickname for Satan was in John Carpenter's Prince of Darkness. Oh boy, where do I even begin with all this? We're Saga again. Heard of the Cult of the Tree? Have you ever heard of the Cult of the Tree? Creepy bunch. In the habit of wearing deer masks, performing murder rituals, victims turning into monsters possessed by darkness, possibly inspired by a horror story written by a certain author. Hmm? Ring any bells? The Cult. Yes. Yes. They have the clicker. Cult of the Word has the clicker? 
Are they working with Scratch? If the cult has the clicker, does that make them Scratch's followers? How are you so certain they even have the clicker? They could be working for Scratch. I, I don't remember. It's all confused. Alan, if I'm going to act on this information, you need to be honest with me. Yeah, of course. Is he confused? Or is he hiding something? Oh, good. Now I get to profile Alan. Scratch. Wake has a double. Mr. Scratch. Where is he now? A cloud of wrath wears my face. The dark place in your place. Scratching out my body of work. Scratch is here. In Washington. He's hunting Wake. The cult and the clicker. Wake said the cult has the clicker. How does he know? The writer is the reader. The next chapter. The next chapter. The next chapter. Keep the pages safe, the dark shining of the words. Wake is hiding pages. That's how he knows the cult has the clicker. Scratch and Wake. Scratch looks just like Wake. Why? Don't wake up the dreamer if your life is a dream. I swam to the shore, but the water is rising. Wake and Scratch are clearly connected. Maybe Scratch got out because Wake did. Or vice versa. Oh boy, this is gonna be complicated. Now I will admit that my very first thought is I wonder if I can go back and get that thing on the radio, but uh, that's just me. Let's see here, case board, what do we got here? Wake just gave us a lot of information, but this clicker seems like a good place to start. If we find that, then we find the cult. Alan Wake interview. Which case is this? The story, of course. Apparently I have a clue to go into the cult stashes, too. Stash found near a creek in the Cauldron Lake area. Is the note inside to scare people off? Do they expect people to break into these? I certainly don't remember what that one meant. The story. Oh, that's not it. Oh, the trail of the cult, I see. And the cult of the tree. Wake, the cult could be followers of Scratch. They have the clicker, after all. Oops. Keep forgetting that backs out of it. All right, all right, all right. Uh, the tr well, let's look at the story, then. There's a bunch of shit in here. The story! The pages we've been finding are from a horror story called Return, written by Alan Wake. And the contents of this book are coming true. Why couldn't it have been a romance? See, that's what I said. How does story change reality rules? The dark place? The story changes our reality bit by bit. The process is gradual. That means the effect isn't immediate. There is still time to fix this. Wake was trapped in the dark place for 13 years. Okay, okay. Wake was in another world that entire time? Wake, fiction coming into contact with the dark place has the power to change reality. That'll be a rule. So whatever you write in the dark place becomes reality? It can't be that simple. 
There is an entity inside the dark place called the Dark Presence. And it's just a photo of one of the blurs that kind of shaped like a screaming face that appears on the screen every so often. Ugh. It's like a dog with no nose. The Dark Place. According to Dark... According to Al uh, Wake, the Dark Presence can sometimes take his appearance. How? Why? How to stop the story, Dark Presence. Scratch and the Dark Presence are interchangeable. Dark Presence. When the Dark Presence looks like Wake, it goes by the name Scratch. An evil twin is a bit convenient. I'll keep an eye on it. Flashlight seems to weaken Taken. I'll put that <laughs> under rules. Ahem. I'll put that under rules. Fine. What if I put that under how to stop the story? I don't know where that goes. Fine. Uh, Wake, in the form of Scratch the Dark Presence, is editing Wake's story, wants to turn the world into a fucking nightmare. I thought it was a separate entity from the Dark Presence, but I guess it's kind of hard to tell with the Eldritch, isn't it? Okay, well, obviously I can't ha let that happen. Uh, turning the world into a fucking nightmare, yes. Some other strange reality the Dark Place merged with ours. This place and the Dark Place have... Uh, uh, what? This place and the dark place, the page called this area, an overlap. The overlap. The page describes the overlap being related to the dark place where Wake was. Uh, Wake must get the clicker before Scratch. With it, the story can be changed, and Scratch will be sent back to the dark place. Well, that'd be hard to stop the story. Makes sense. A magic light switch? Where do I even start with that? Scratch wants it to bring about his ending. That, that can't happen. Wake, if we don't stop it, Scratch will use the story to permanently change reality at the start of Deerfest. Uh, the Dark Presence. <sighs> no. Rules? No. How to stop the story? That only gives us two days to stop this. Turn the world into a fucking nightmare. Turn the world into a fucking nightmare. I did think it was weird that she specifically mentioned Deerfest, because I didn't think that had happened before that. Alex Casey, lunchboxes. Lunchbox found at the bottom of the waterfall at Cauldron Lake. There was a page of a story inside, but this is definitely not like the other pages I've been reading. Fan fiction? Wish I remembered that more clearly. I remember finding a bunch of other uh, manuscript pieces. I still can't pet the head. How sad. You're hiding pages! Okay. Mr. Wig, I know you have more pages of the manuscript on you. You don't understand how vital these pages are. They're the only way I can know what's coming. You're not the only one trying to solve this. This is our job. Okay. Here. Now, this is all I have. Be careful with them. Inside the trailer, at the outskirts of Watery, Saga had seen Wake's fabled clicker for the first time in the hands of the Cult of the Tree. A cultist stared at her. She drew a weapon. I think we need to hear that in its entirety. Oh, it just brought us straight there. Wow. Standing inside the trailer at the outskirts of Watery, Saga had seen Wake's fabled clicker for the first time in the hands of the cult of the tree. Her mind reeled from what the horror story was now claiming about her, her life, her past. She didn't accept it. She stepped out of the trailer. She needed air. But she wasn't alone. A cultist stared at her from behind a deer mask. 
She drew her weapon, shouted, ran after him. So she did have her past edited, and something did happen to Logan. Oh no. Standing inside the trailer of the outskirts of Watery, yes. Where is the clicker? A trailer near Watery, huh? Good place to start. Wake the call to the trees in possession of the clicker. The cult of the tree has the clicker Wake told me about. Wake's They're clicker part oh. of all this. Wake's clicker in cult possession, somewhere in Watery. Trailer significant somehow. I was already looking into the cult. Two birds, one stone. The cult. Yes. Yes. They have the clicker. So the impression I got from the actual conversation they were having was that, uh... It was that, uh... Well, I feel like Saga would have been saying that even if she did think the man was batshit insane, because she needed to be, like, polite and friendly and just confirm his story so that they have it absolutely in his own words, and then they can casually dismiss it and move on. But I do, for the record, I do feel like in this case, you know, habit as it might have been, that she does believe Alan, if only because of all the supernatural bullshit she has already witnessed herself. What the hell is that? There's a sticky note in the side of the, uh, the filing cabinet here. Passion is never enough, neither is skill, but try. That's a weird thing to find there. Hang on. Is that actually it's there? It's on the page. The clicker. The cult. Okay, I'll head to Watery and find this trailer. Casey, you stay here and keep an eye on Mr. Wake. Got it. No, you need me there. No dice, pal. This is an FBI investigation, and I don't see a badge on that flannel. Oh, I guess I was wrong about that. From now on, you can switch between Alan and Saga's stories via the bucket in the janitor's break room. Feel free to play in whatever order you choose. Well, if the, uh, if the interview is right, then I guess the suggestion was that... Saga's story focuses more on the mystery aspect of it all. And Alan's story focuses more on the horror aspect of it all. So maybe I'll stick with Saga for a while, huh? I don't like this code as much as the one with the FBI uh, symbol on the back. This is basically that, but much lighter, so you can see every wrinkle more clearly. And without the FBI thing on the back, it just kind of looks like a rain code. Keep your chin up, says my lozenge wrapper. About these pages. You wrote these pages in the dark place. So why are we finding them here? I think I wrote them up. I remember writing an endless amount of pages. When this happened before, the, the pages were being sent from the dark place to help me. Maybe the same thing is happening here. That's all for now, Mr. Wig. Thank you for your cooperation. There was, incidentally, a sticky note in the right spot, but I uh, couldn't zoom as much out there, so I have no idea what it says. Uh, why did I come back in here? Oh yes, there's some more things to put on the board. I enter the cauldron like over set lap by reciting the poem. I'll put that in the rules section. No? The dark place? No. Okay, that went there. I put the flashlight thing on dark presence. Light and the dark presence. Uh, flashlight seems to be taken. It would make sense that light is effective against the dark presence, too. Inside a bright light, Saga felt safe, like nothing could hurt her here. Well, that's a rule if I've ever heard one. <clears throat> oh, come on. Really? Fine, I'll try light and the dark presence. Yeah. Well-lit areas are safe from the Dark Presence and the Taken. Enter the cauldron like overlap by reciting the poem. Nah. How to stop the story? Oh, the overlap. Duh, duh. 
The poem is about a local legend, a witch's lost heart, about terror. Ominous. Wait a minute. Wake, he remembers writing many pages on the dark place. And wake the cult to be followers of Scratch, they have the clicker after all. Who's involved? No. Cult psychology? Cult goal. Yeah, cult goal. Why work for Scratch? What does the cult get out of it? Many pages. Uh, writing part of ritual. Sure. If Wake is the origin of the pages, then no cult connection? Unless the cult is working with Scratch. Alright, I guess I'll have to do that later. Since that one didn't change out of a four later. Ah, there's the mop and bucket. Oh, I see. I look at the black stain on the ground. understands the forces behind this. I can help you. No, no, that's not how this works. You're a civilian, and we don't do right along. Yeah, we do. And if Scratch is after you, then so is the cult. We don't know who we can trust here. Damn it, you are making a mistake. Mm-hmm. I'll be sure to add that to the list. Casey says that as if we aren't absolutely guaranteed to be, you know, traveling through the dark with him at some point. Hi, welcome. Sup. Okay. Past favorite Deerfest floats. Go. The yarn puppet monstrosity. The stuffed moose and squirrels one. No, thank you. <laughs> Those beady dead marble eyes still give me nightmares. Why do you have a guy watching the bar when it's like 8 in the morning? So who's in for a bet this year? A hundred bucks says there'll be at least one fender bender between the floats. For that amount of money, you, you'll cause it yourself. Yeah, I'm not taking that wager. Too many opportunities for interference. Hello, and welcome to Coffee World, voted Washington's best coffee-themed amusement park. All of our attractions are family-friendly and available to children of all ages. Just like our coffee. So, take a sip of our Oh Dear Diner organic coffee and let the adventure begin! Of course it's the uh, same guys in the other commercial. Hold on for dear life on the Espresso Express! Soak in some local history at the Huatari Well, where two serial killers once hid the disemboweled bodies of their murder victims. Uh, it's not a haunted. No. <laughs> Come join Mocha Moose and the goats at our amusement park petting zoo. Just don't share your coffee with the goats. <laughs> Seriously, stop feeding our goats coffee. Seriously. It's not amusing. Take in amazing views from the slow road through Ferris Wheel. I can almost see the watery lighthouse trailer park. This is so much fun. And finish off at our beautiful gift shop where seniors and children under 10 receive a 9% discount on keychains and propane tax. Welcome to Coffee World. We guarantee you'll jaw a great time. This is the third time I've requested something be done about the TV in my room. It keeps going on by itself. It's keeping me awake all night. Yes, sir, I'm terribly sorry for that. Uh, we've called a professional electrician. In the meantime, have you tried unplugging the TV for the night? Oh, oh, there's an idea, Einstein. Well, 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 why, why don't I just get rid of everything I'm paying for in that room while I'm at it? Sleep on the floor. Go to the toilet in the corner. Hey, I'm not unplugging it. You're fixing it. Of course, sir. I mean, I would have tried unplugging it. I'm just saying. That fishing guy is still there. No way this will still work. Hmm. 
No, I guess not. That'll have to wait until they implement New Game Plus, I guess, sadly. I'll try not to over-fixate on that. This is weird. Just knee-deep in water for some reason. Like they didn't plan this area out very well for high tide. Kids of all ages can celebrate Deerfest at the Happy Harvest, located at Tamisto Farms. Just a ten-minute drive out of town. Bright Falls 81st Annual Deerfest. Due to concerns over last year's incident, adults are not asked not to bring alcohol to this event. Well, I'm Burning Dog Face, and I will see you on the next episode of Let's Play Alan Wake 2. When we, I don't know, spend some time looking around and looking for more goods and services. Maybe there'll be more radio broadcasts out there, I don't know. Till then, have yourselves a great day, and stay in the light.